this is something that's going to need to change. We're asking that people remove themselves from this area for the safety of the people. If they care about people, they're going to have to try to help us to make it safe. Shots ring out, and this is the video of it. Once again, in the Capitol Hill protest zone in Seattle, the two people hit teenagers, and one of them is dead tonight. Now questions are swirling about whether the so-called chop should even be there. Glad to have you with us tonight. I'm Greg Copeland. I'm Joyce Taylor. We have team coverage on the protest zone, now notorious across the country. We begin with Vanessa Mishania outside the CHOP. She joins us live. So, Vanessa, the mood there, it has certainly changed. Tell us the latest. Joyce, it is noticeably more heavy, heavier than I have ever experienced here at the CHOP. Of course, hours after the second deadly shooting that's happened at the organized protest zone. And as we wait for word on, on what is going to happen next for this movement, organizers inside, they tell me that, uh, excuse me, they tell me that they are waiting to catch their breath and regroup and then figure out their next step. So I want to show you what it looks like uh, today, what right now. And honestly, it is the emp emptiest that I've ever seen it. Uh, really a fraction of the amount of protesters here today than we have seen in the past three weeks of its existence. Uh, really, the, the protesters are only congregated right in front of the East Precinct uh, behind those barriers. Now, there are some tents in Cal Anderson Park, but there are no more stages and no more speakers, at least today. It is far from the festival-like atmosphere that had been here the last few weeks, as we've described. Now, again, this after a 16-year-old boy was killed and a 14-year-old was critically injured when a shooting broke out in the early hours of today. Now, earlier this week, we talked to an activist. His name's Andre Taylor. His brother was killed by police, and his organization called Not This Time advocates against police brutality. He says CHOP has gotten too violent, and in that violence, the message is lost. If there was never no violence, you should have stood there for us every you wanted to stay there. But the violence creates a different narrative, where then people who are in authority have to look at it differently. Now, while Taylor is a respected activist here in Seattle about this issue, he is not one of the organizers on the ground. And I spoke to some of the protesters today. They asked me to hang on a bit before I approach them. They're in the process of regrouping and collecting their breath. I hope to hear from them sometime soon tonight uh, to ask them about where the movement goes from here. For now, live in Capitol Hill, Vanessa Mishania, King 5 News. Back to you guys. All right. Vanessa, thank you. And as we mentioned, the protest area is on the national radar now. The president has been tweeting about it what for weeks. What was that? And today he was back on Twitter criticizing the situation on Capitol Hill. This morning he wrote, quote, Seattle looters, agitators, anarchists, and protesters are now refusing to leave the CHOP zone. They have zero respect for government. So what happened to the CHOP zone being taken down? That was supposed to happen over the weekend. Now, as you know, a teenager is dead. Another is in the hospital. King 5 Sebastian Robertson joining us live. Sebastian, you were outside the CHOP yesterday. It was supposed to be dismantled. Why wasn't it? Two uh, deadlines now missed. Uh, those barricades supposed to be taken down Friday and then again on Sunday. And we don't have a good answer. We contacted the mayor and the chief. Uh, we'll get to more of that in a minute, including an updated statement from the mayor. But first, that 16-year-old was shot and killed a 14-year-old here in the hospital, marking the uh, second incident, which led to a second death connected to the CHOP. For the first time in weeks, we see a police presence inside the area now known as the CHOP. Crime scene investigators combing over this white Jeep where two teens, 16 and 14, were shot both taken to the hospital by volunteer medics. The area has been occupied by protesters for three weeks. SPD kept out, and this morning, police making it clear their presence is only temporary. Listen. As soon as we are done here, those vehicles will leave with us. We're not going to be leaving any component here. Video posted online captures the moments leading up to the shooting. What appears to be the same white Jeep is seen driving erratically on the soccer field. And look at this video from live stream cameras. Just before 3 a.m., more than a dozen shots are heard. 
video that captures what sounds like more than a dozen gunshots. And then at 2.59, at the very top of your screen, you can see that white Jeep plow into the cement barricades. And it is abundantly clear to our detectives people had been in and out of the car after the shooting. Detectives are trying to get information from witnesses, but as has been the case in other crime scenes up in this area, people are not being cooperative with our request for help. Police have yet to say who fired first or what may have led to the volley of gunfire. They're asking for the public's help. Two men are dead. Two men are dead. And a child, a 14-year-old, is hospitalized, and we don't know what is going to happen to that kid. Enough is enough here. The police chief clearly frustrated by the situation and at times appearing to uh, appear emotional after that 14 year old uh, was taken here to the hospital. His condition unknown at this point. I want to get to a statement that the mayor gave in the last hour. Take a look at this. The mayor's statement says in part, quote, most individuals previously participating in the Capitol Hill demonstrations have been peaceful and have protested in support of the message that all black lives matter. It goes on to say that, quote, unfortunately, that message has been undermined by the violence in the area. There has been an unacceptable behavior by individuals who are preventing city employees from doing their job. It also says that over the last week, with the city's help and urging hundreds of individuals have departed the area, the dozens that still remain at the East Precinct in Cal Anderson Park also being urged to leave again. No firm timeline from either the chief or the mayor as to when those barricades will be moved. Street access will go back to normal and the neighborhood will be turned back to the police and to the neighbors in Seattle. Sebastian Robertson, King 5 News. All right, Sebastian, thank you. Violence like this morning's shooting has become a more regular occurrence in the so-called CHOP. Six people have been shot and two of them have died in the last 10 days. Many of the shooting victims are teens. Now, this all started June 20th when a 19-year-old was killed and a 33-year-old wounded by gunfire. The survivor told King 5 that he was the target of a hate crime. The next day, a 17-year-old was shot talk to police. On the 23rd, a man in his 30s was shot. He also would not cooperate with authorities. And then that brings us to this morning shooting involving those two teens. The neighborhood has been tense since before police left the East Precinct. During one protest back on June 7th, a man drove into a barricade and shot a protester who tried to stop him. That protester survived and told King 5 he felt he had to act to keep others from getting hurt.